Good morning again, guys. Uh, we're here on uh, Economic Science. We're going to teach you how to do a uh, hood with the SLX uh, Plus, right? Yeah. So, well, first, I think all uh, we know that we need to clean the surface very well. I don't know what you guys use, but I prefer to wash the cards first. Then I use uh, baby soap on the water. And it, works for, uh, it, ro it works really well. We clean it, we clay the car. This one is not clay. <laughs> it's a little bit rough today. So uh, then we alcohol it. The alcohol is only to discontaminate the last grease or anything on the surface. For the SLX, you wanna do that very well. Uh, that way it can stick really well. So uh, this one, it already is pre-cut. So I'm just gonna teach you how to put it in the center and how to manage. So first, I can show you right here, we got the corner, I don't know if you all guys see right here. The way I do one of the times is, I only pass like one of an inch away from the, from the edge right here. That way I know it's aligned, then go to the other corner. And I do exactly the same. This is a good reference for aligning the material. If it's too deep right here, you can come with this little tool right here that it works really well. The body fender, and you cut the excess um, right here. So you leave yourself enough space so you don't get short. That way, oh. Oh, it didn't cut the liner, sorry. So, let me go with the knife right here, real quick. So now, <clears throat> the windshield is not on the way, and the material is completely flat. On this one, the graphic itself is telling us where is the center. You can use any guy of the, of the car to find the center. Sometimes I like to fold the material in half, that way you got a line too. That's another way you can do to find the center. I always say to the guys, align it on the center and top to bottom. Top to bottom, we did it with the corner. That's a good point to, uh, for any installer, any rookie installers, this is a good way to know that your graphic is gonna be straight. If you align it the same spots in these two sides, you know it's gonna be straight. And then right here, we come and we find the center right here with the, usually the meter of each car is on the center or sometimes the car has right here like a little mark on the, on the windshield, that's the center too. So right now we got on the center, we got our line top to bottom, sorry. So right now I'm taking my magnets, this car is magnetic, that's good, some cars are not magnetic. So I can teach you with another piece of material how to do it if it doesn't have any vinyl, uh, any magnets. But we're gonna use the magnet right now. We're gonna come right here and cut some excess too. Usually, when you got a piece like this, you don't want these sharp corners. When you're taking the, the backing off, this corner will jam on you and it will create a crease. And if you're using like reflector for something, it will create a bruise. So you want to avoid any, any excess material that it will get you in, in your way for your installations. Because this is a big hood. I'm not gonna wrap it all around the hood. So we're just gonna use like this area of the hood. So I'm gonna come right here and usually you just want, oh, this one is not working and do like a round corner. So that way when you're taking the, the backing out, it will help you out. If you come right here and see, we split the material with the body fender on the back. 
it's already done, but I can show you guys how to do it. We divide this hood in a T. So we usually start dividing on the center, and then this bottom part, we do it separate. So you can t lay down the material on your table, and you're gonna use your body fender. Gonna peel a little bit right here. Make sure when you're gonna do it, the material is flat. You don't wanna be creasing or something because then the tool is gonna jam on the material. See? And because the SSLX, it doesn't stick in the, in, the, in the Teflon. It's easier to do it on this type of material. Other materials are a little more sticky, so it's gonna stick. So if you're gonna use it on high tack, on any other permanent glue, be aware that it can jump. So you need to be real careful how you do it. On the SLX, it works perfectly. So on this part, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fold this a little bit. And then I don't wanna expose the ink, so I'm gonna hold it, I'm gonna put it this way, and with my hand, I'm just gonna, in an angle. If you do it on this side, it can jam on you. If you do it in angle, it can release a little bit easier. That way, you're not exposing the ink, and you're not getting any contaminations underneath, if you do it that way. Always roll your trash, put it underneath the car, or away, because it's real slippery. You can come right here, and if you see the material, it basically moves all over the, the hood, so it's not sticking. See, you can come right here, compared to other materials, you can lay it down. If you put any force in my hand like this, then it will grab, because this is the SLX Plus, it got more grab, initial tack. So we come right here, we use this as a guide. So you wanna come right here and put your material exactly in your point right there. Oh, where am I going? I'm always gonna look for the high points on any vehicle. On this one, this is a high point. So I'm just gonna stick the material right here. I'm gonna stick a little bit, a couple inches. If you got a flat surface, you can stick a little more so your material does not move. And if you see, you come, you got more on each attack. Once you start heating up, it will grab even more. So we come right here. If you wanna be safe, you can come with your magnet away from the bump, from the hood, and put a magnet right there. So in case you move it by mistake, someone can try to help you, and you move the registration that way, it doesn't move on you, okay? So we try to lay out the material as far as possible. We take this out of here. And then we come right here and we're gonna do the same that we did. On the other side, we can roll this. See, if you got a sharp edge, it's a little more difficult. Where's my knife? Right here. All right, so I'm gonna do a sharp edge right here. Take this out of the way. Then, with this material, it's real easy to come and just grab the corner, fold it over, and basically take it out. That way, you avoid the contaminations on the car or any surface. So we got it stick over there and now we're gonna come right here that's a good question <laughs> so if you get dirt on this material i will say if it's too much you will have to redo the piece it, it sticks too too much to the to the to the glue so that way you're gonna have a lot of spots with dirt so, and you don't want to do that. If you, if something gets underneath, you should change the piece. If it's something like you touch it with your hands or something, this material actually, you can grab a little bit water, uh, soapy water and clean it, but little. Do not splash the material, just go 
and trying to take out those little spots that you uh, get there on it. But again, if it's too much and you stick it and you see it, I don't recommend you to do that to the client. Even if you had to reprint it, I suggest you to just change it. So that we come right here, we put a little tense. If you see how the material is telling you these fingers, so you need tension to this side. So you just put a little bit of tension to this side and then where we put is supposed to lay down right there when we, <clears throat> when we first put it. So right now, now we got all this flat area. Let me put a little more tension right here. The material, you don't need to stretch it too much. Just keep the tension. You can stick right here so it doesn't move on you. And it's right there when we want it. So we stick it right here on a high point. Now we got all the center to work out and then this bottom part. The way we divide it on the backing behind, that's almost the same way we're gonna install it. I like to divide the materials always half, half. So if you got this big P, we divide it right here. So we're gonna start sticking on another high point. We're gonna go all the way up, all the way down, but leave us a space right here so we can lift and take the rest of the backing out. If you come right here and then stick too close, you're giving you no space, and when you're trying to peel the backing, it will break on you. So you leave a couple inches right there, you have the center. So right now, we can come to this side and start literally slicing the material. Oh, we got a couple of wrinkles right there. So we can leave the material real easy and then put a little more tension so it doesn't jam on you right there. Sometimes the material, you need an extra hand right here, just putting a little tension so the material don't jam. So you just put a little bit of tension right here and you go slicing the material and seeing right here we got the antenna, we're gonna pass that part so we don't have to cut on the car. So we're gonna go around And then right here we stick, but we need to take it out so we can get the air out because we're squeezing this side. Okay, see how the air is coming. On these recess, the material will conform basically with no heat. You see how right here we got a little bit of jump. You put a little bit of tension right here and you can keep squeezing the material out. I'm gonna leave a space right here for the nozzle. If you got a crease like this, you can simply go with your finger and put it out. Like I said, I'm not gonna go too close to the, to the nozzle, so I'm gonna leave a little bit of space right there. But good thing, if you get any wrinkles, like you just saw, you can just simply peel the material out Readjust, put a little bit of tension, and you can keep going. You don't need heat so far to repose the material. Okay, so we got this part. If I were, if I was gonna do the nozzle, I would open right here first. I would not jam it right there. The tighter you put anything, the more fingers you're gonna get once you open it. So let's say I'm gonna do this and you can't remove the nozzle, I will open a little hole on the nozzle and then I will heat the material. I don't wanna cut, actually, probably I can try it so you guys see. With your blade real, real small, you can come right here and open a little bit. And when you do these type of cuts, I know it's a little bit difficult but trying to do it in a circle. If you do sharp like this, the material will still rip in. If you go and do a cut like a U-form, doesn't matter how much you pull, you're not gonna rip it. So every time you cut something, slice something because you need to get your free space, try to have in a round corner, not in, in a sharp. 
I know sometimes it's difficult, like the cuts I'm doing right now, but I know if you, <laughs> if you cut sharp, you are gonna get, uh, it's gonna get ripped. So, I got a couple of fingers right here. With the SLX, I always give myself a lot of space, so if I'm gonna do that nozzle, I will pop a little bit more. Let me go to this side so I can get that wrinkle so you can see. And then you readjust, and then you come with the heat. The closer you are to the material, the faster you wanna move the heat gun, the torch. You see how basically I'm shrinking the material. That's how I call it. So you come right here, meet up. Now the material is completely flat. Once you heat up, do not put your <laughs> squeegee right away. If you do it right away, I can guarantee you, you will create a mark on the, on the lamination because it's too hot, so your squeegee will get stuck. Some people, they're good just uh, sticking and sticking, but then you will see some marks on the vinyl. You avoid that, giving it the material a couple of seconds to like cool down a little bit, that way your squeegee does not jam on you. And if you come right here, I'm always literally like slicing the material so the air flows to the, to the channels. See, I'm getting close to the, to the nozzle. You see this, it has a lot of tension right here. So probably we can open a little more so we don't have tension right there. I can grab my tool and just pop this a little bit. Keep space to the material. Okay, so right now, we're gonna open a little bit more right here so we can release that tension. Okay, I'll take this out. And now I heat up a little bit so the material shrink back. And then when we go with the squeegee, it does not shrink on us. So, you see that I give a, that I get a lot of material to this nozzle, and I start like go in, and as I go, I touch the material, and you can feel the tension on the material, and you want less tension on the material. That way, when you do the final cut, it will not finger on you. So you come right here, start pushing the material in. Sometimes you need to grab a tool and just give a little space so material walks in to all the areas. So if you come and see, I can cut this right now and I can heat up and it will not shrink on me because I basically walk the material in. And if you see the lines right here as a guy, it doesn't have any stretch at all. All the lines are basically completely straight so that means the material has no tension. So when you cut and trim, you will have no issue with that nozzle. So let's do uh, right here the light. This car is actually a little bit complex to do. So I'm gonna try to show you how I would do it. Can you do this side or do you have to do that side? No, I can do this side. Okay, so I'm gonna do this side for you guys. We're gonna take the rest of the backing out. to the corner. Okay. I'm gonna start installing all this part and then I'm gonna come right here and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do the corner. So I'm gonna start right here. Then I'm gonna keep sliding with a little bit of tension on the bottom. I'm just gonna do the corner for you guys. 
I don't have enough material, but I'm gonna do this area. So right here, you see how I'm pulling the material? I'm gonna start heating up, but I want the material to be tense. I don't wanna be pulling too much because you go, you're gonna start heating up and then you're gonna disturb the image. So you do wanna put tension on the material and you're gonna start heating up all the area that we're gonna do a stretch. It's been a while since I don't use torch. Sorry, let me put it right here so you can see, touch the material. So you see how close I'm to the material because I want to get it. I don't have a lamp, so when I'm heating over here, right here is getting cold. So I'm heating the material real well, so it gives me enough time for me to do that pole that I'm going to do. So you can get close to the material. As long as you are moving the heat gun, it won't burn on you. But the closer you are to the material, the faster you need to move with the torch, okay? And we're gonna do it in, P in, in, <clears throat> in parts. We're not gonna try to do all the in, in ones, okay? So I gotta heat up, right? And then I always heat up and wait a couple seconds so I can pull, so it's not completely hot. So we're gonna pull. You see how the material is gonna move over there? All the way down. What I want is this first center area completely smooth. That way, again, I'm dividing the material right here. So right now, I can squeeze this part up to here, and then I can peel this side and work with this side separate, and then with the center separate. If you're trying to do it at once, you will need extra hands or something, but if you're in solo, this is one of the, of the ways. So you come right here, Remember, you're taking the air out, so you need a way out for the air to come. So I'm lifting a little bit right there, and I'm squeegee down. Okay, then come right here, peel this side, put a little bit of tension, and I want those wrinkles to go away first before I do the, uh, the heating. Okay, so now I come right here again and heat up this section right here so we can get the headlight. And tension on the material right here and you start heating up again. Do you prefer the heat gun versus the torch? So in my case, I prefer the torch just because I don't like to work with the cores. I'm all, uh, we always move in on the shop. So, but if you have no experience, I suggest you to start with the heat gun, get used to the, uh, to the heat of the heat gun, and then try the torch because you can burn the material real quick. So we let it sit for a couple seconds and then we pull again. Now, that I pull right there, obviously we're not gonna get covered the headlight. So right here we can do two things. I can keep stretching here, keep stretching a little bit there, and I'm gonna get it done, but it can destroy the material. On these type of vehicles, like the Mini Coopers, we like to open a circle, that way the material relax. The same thing we did with the windshield, so we can do it here. We can measure it, or see it, Right here, we can lift it a little bit, and with the knife, we can come right here and make it open. Obviously, be careful to not cut or make the hole too big. Do it that way. See how right now, basically, I have no tension right here, and I can pull the same technique. Pull right here, heat up. With the torch, it's a little bit slow, the heating process. But actually, you got more control 
of the heat that you're putting to the surface. We let it sit for a couple seconds and then we won. So right here, we good. So right here we got these fingers. So you wanna pull to this side and readjust the material. Even when it's not too hot, the material will still flexible enough so you to pull. And if you see the lines, the way we're doing it, they're not disturbing too much. So, and that's what we want because if we got some images, then you just don't want to pull and pull and pull. And then when you have a straight line, you have a cricket line. So this is one of the ways to do this headlight. You can open it right here, but if you had a big piece, if I have enough time, uh, enough material, I can come and just do one big pull and wrap it at once. Okay? Oh, sorry. But we can, I can give you more details of that on the class. So let's go to the recess for this streaming purpose.